Hi, I'm Abby Noy. I'm a Regional Extension Educator at the University of Minnesota. As a livestock owner, you are probably the one who can tell me that forage is one of the most expensive components of raising and caring for your livestock. In 2016, the National Agricultural Statistics Service, NAS, estimates that 53.4 million acres of hay was produced in the United States. 53.4 million acres is just slightly smaller than the entire state of Minnesota. On that area of land, 134.7 million tons of forage were produced by you hay producers. While that amount of land and that amount of tonnage of hay may seem like a fair amount, 2016 actually marked the fourth year of decline in the total number of acres used to grow hay. 4.4 million acres less have been produced in the last four years for our livestock animals. However, even though there's been a reduction in the acres grown on, there's actually been an increase in the yield from 2.3 tons per acre in 2013 to 2.5 tons per acre in 2016. These numbers indicate that hay producers are using best management practices when growing, managing, and harvesting their hay crops. In Minnesota, we adore our university mascot, national champion, Goldie Gopher. Although his cousins aren't as fun and friendly to have around for hay producers because they live in these. Hay equipment, including hay rakes, have to navigate around these gopher mounds, molehills, and other environmental conditions in order to produce hay, which can likely increase the potential for ash contamination in the hay product being produced. Ash is the total mineral content of forages, and it comes in two forms. The first is endogenous. These are naturally occurring minerals such as nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, calcium, and other nutrients that are nutritionally valuable to an animal. Grass hay naturally has 6% of this type of ash, and alfalfa hays have about 8% of this ash. The second type of ash is exogenous. This is commonly associated with soil and silica and is very undesirable in our animal rations. Ash replaces nutrients in your animal's ration. It has no calories and it also may reduce the economic efficiencies of your hay when you're purchasing from an outside producer. The University of Wisconsin Marshfield Forage and Soil Testing Laboratory collected data on ash from thousands of samples that it had processed over a period of five years. In this data collection, they found on average grass haze had an ash content just above 10% and alfalfa haze had ash just above 12%. If we go back a few moments earlier in the video, you learned that the naturally occurring ash in grasses is about 6% and 8% in alfalfa. So if we subtract that naturally occurring ash from the average ash that the Marshfield Laboratory discovered, that tells us there's about 4% of soil contamination in both of these types of forages. While processing the data that the Marshfield Laboratory collected, they found ash content values as low as 5.7% and as high as 18%. Feeding an 18% ash forage to your animals means there's probably going to be about 10% contamination in that forage product. When feeding an adult animal an 18% ash content feed and you're feeding them 2.5% of their body weight, chances are you're going to be feeding about two and a half pounds of dirt in their ration. There are already some best practices that research has shown us can reduce ash in your when you're harvesting hay. First, avoid harvesting lodged hay. Lodging occurs when the stem begins to become too tall, likely due to harvest delays, and the plant falls, allowing it to have contact with the soil. Cutting height is recommended above three inches for grasses and alfalfa can be slightly lower than that. 
increasing your cutting height above that three inches can decrease your ash. Increasing your cutting height will also decrease your yield. For every inch above the recommended cutting height, you will lose a half a ton per acre in yield for one growing season. Using a flat knife on your disc mower can decrease your ash compared with using an angled knife. The angled knives on disc mowers create a vacuum suction and can suck that soil or any dry contamination into your forage products. Also, use the widest swath possible when mowing your hay and leaving it on dense stubble. Because hay rakes may come in contact with the ground, the potential to contribute ash during the raking process exists. Rake mechanisms, function, and economic value differ among hay rake types. Research was completed in Minnesota, Pennsylvania, and Wisconsin to evaluate four styles of hay rakes so that we can understand their possible contribution to ash in hay. The top photos show the wheel rake on the left and the sidebar on the right, which are common and less expensive. The bottom left shows a hydraulically driven rotary rake. And finally, we used a merger, which is, shows on the bottom right. All of the rakes were tested by combining two swaths to form one windrow. Wheel rakes are ground driven and require contact with the ground to gather hay. These rakes are less expensive and some models allow a swath to be raked as wide as 21 feet. A sidebar rake, also known as a parallel bar or roller bar, is ground driven but can be adjusted to have limited contact with the ground due to a wheel belt or PTO powertrain. However, a disadvantage of the sidebar rake is its limited working width. Rotary rakes are power driven and adjustments can be made to avoid excess contact with the ground and to avoid unnecessary contact with the leaves of the forages. A hay merger is not classified as a rake, but still accomplishes the merging of swath rows. Mergers are power driven and can be adjusted to avoid excess contact with the ground. Although this piece of equipment can save time and labor by merging multiple swaths at once, it is more costly compared with other hay rakes. This table illustrates the varying levels of ash and hay produced by hay rake types. Overall, Minnesota had higher ash content likely due to the sandy soil conditions compared with Pennsylvania and Wisconsin that had loamy soil. The first column, stand, gives the average value of ash as percent dry matter of the entire field before any equipment entered it. Ash values are then listed after mowing was complete after raking with one of the four hay rakes, and finally after the product was baled. Significant differences in ash content post raking were observed between rake types in five of the six site cuttings. In general, the wheel rake resulted in the greatest amount of ash, while the hay merger and sidebar rake resulted in the least amount of ash. In conclusion, there were in fact differences found between the hay rake types. The wheel rake had the greatest amount of ash where the merger and sidebar rake had the least amount of ash. In addition to wide swaths, cutting heights above two inches, at knife, the use of a hay merger or sidebar rake should be added to the list of best management practices to reduce ash content in hay.